Mm, oh. <laughs> Friends, didn't hear you come in. Welcome to another episode of In Your Mouth with Chef Timmy. Today, we're going to keep it classy with some fine dining techniques. That's right, we're going to make a nice wild caught salmon with a brown sugar bacon and bourbon glaze with chanterelle mushrooms, grilled asparagus, and a winter squash puree. <laughs> I'm getting hungry just talking about it. Hey, Timmy, don't forget about those uh, viewer questions. What's that? Huh. John in the booth said y'all had some questions. So, uh, this season coming up, we are going to be expanding a little bit. We're going to have uh, lots of different skill sets. We'll be doing cuisine from Easy peasy lemon squeezy, all the way to difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. That's right. What was that, John? On the street. On the street? Ah, uh, <laughs> I know you guys have some questions about it. on the street. Yes, Chef Timmy is going to get back out on the street, put things in his mouth again, just for you. And this season, we're going to meet with some very special friends. I'm going to travel out to the west side of Portland in Forest Grove to a very good friend of mine, Chef Kimberly, to see her brand new food truck, Fork and Twirl. Come on down for one of the prettiest smiles you've ever seen and some delicious food. I'll also be trying to catch up with Chef Scott. <laughs> that boy is always running around somewhere, but I know I can catch him Friday nights at Lentz Park. When he's down there volunteering his time giving back to the community, feeding those who are less fortunate than all of us. And last but not least, on our schedule, we have a visit with Chef Marco. Hey John, uh, you got that picture of me and Chef Marco from our last camping trip? Why don't you go ahead and put that up? That's right, Chef Marco is going to be talking about his love for spicy foods and how he makes his hot sauces from scratch. Let me tell you, those are some sauces that you're going to want to put in your mouth. And he's trying to talk me into doing some kind of spicy challenge. I'm not up for it, but if you want to see me do a spicy challenge, let us know down in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching. Mm, oh. <laughs> make sure to get your booties down at the market and pick up these ingredients in order to make the dishes on today's episode of In Your Mouth with <laughs> Chef Timmy. Today's episode, we're going to be putting together some beautiful fall flavors, some beautiful fall colors. A little, uh, keep it a little elegant today. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, I hope you like what we got going today. It's a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. Welcome to another edition of In Your Mouth with Chef Timmy. Today we're going to be making a beautiful wild caught coho salmon. I'm going to pair that with some delicious winter squash, asparagus, the delicious bourbon maple brown sugar bacon glaze. Let's get started. All right, first thing you want to do is grab your butternuts. Butternuts, butternuts, butternut squash. We're gonna go with butternut squash today. It's a little easier for me to cut because um, it just is. Now, we always want to start chopping off that stem. And we're going to go down to the booty of the butternut. The butternut. Now that we got that off, let's go ahead and cut the neck off that thing. Cutting the neck off. 
Ooh. Hope you got a sharp knife. Now before we go right down the middle and start cutting this into cubes, I'm gonna wanna peel this guy. Now, there's two ways you can go about it. You can use your trusty chef's knife and just go or your peeler. Peeler. We're using a classic peeler on your butternuts. It'd be much easier. I hope we got them seeds taken out. Let's just uh, cut up this piece here. Cut your butternuts into like two inch cubes. Stick them in a pot of boiling salted water and let them boil for like a good 15 minutes. After which you'll drain and saute to get that moisture out. All right, let's take this asparagus, asparagus, asparagus. Let's get these asparagus. Asparaguses. How do you say it? Well, anyway, I'm gonna take these asparaguses and I'm gonna uh, cut the buttons off. Cut those woody stalks off your asparagus and haul some away. Marinate these little guys. Don't be afraid to cover your little asparagus. Plenty of lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper. Makes for fantastically fresh tasting asparagus that you can put in your mouth. I got myself a nice little countertop smokeless grill. And while I let that guy um, heat up, let these guys marinate. Now, I know some of these things I may go a little fast or if I uh, skip over some steps and you have any questions or if you um, want to send me some nudes, my DMs are always open. These fabulous little fellows right here, I purchased at Grower's Outlet at 162nd and Gleason here in Southeast Portland. These are chanterelle mushrooms and they were sourced locally here in the Pacific Northwest. We're gonna cut our perfectly normal, not magic at all, mushrooms into bite-sized pieces. Then we'll take this little shallot. I'm gonna cut the ends off it, peel them, and small, tiny little dice, these guys. Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be like this guy. Unless you got experience like I do, keep your eye on that knife. All right, now that I got all the veggies cut, we'll go ahead and go with the protein. Uh, it's probably a pretty good idea to do your veggies first before you stick your raw meat on there, you big dummy. You gotta believe me when I say the cool kids are not cross-contaminating. Ooh boy, we made short work of that bacon, didn't we? Bacon is my lover and my best friend. Let's heat up our pan, check on our squash, and make sure our grill is looking good. As a chef, worked a lot of long hours, weird hours, all nighters. And one thing that got me through, still does, is coffee. I love coffee. I'm not really picky when it comes to coffee. I'll drink three day old sludge. I'll get it down at 7-Eleven. But sometimes I want it done right. And when I want it done right, I do it myself. And this, my friends, is how Chef Timmy does coffee right. Mmm, oh. <laughs> Today we're gonna make some wonderful coffee that I got from Hood River Roasters. I like to shop local, I like to take care of my local businesses, small businesses, and you know, in turn, they take care of me by giving me a, a fantastic product. Today we have an espresso blend that I did into a fine ground uh, in my grinder. I started out with a half a cup of espresso blend beans. On this side, for the pour over, I started with three quarters of a cup of our Hood River house blend. <clears throat> Behind me, I got a kettle going. As soon as that water hits about 200 degrees, we're gonna make this pour over. Then I'm gonna show you how to work 
this weird little guy. For the three quarters cup of coarse ground beans, you're gonna go ahead and use an entire liter of hot water as you pour it over there slowly. It takes time, but it's worth it. Well, we let gravity do its thing there. Let's take a look at this guy. What a strange little device. Now, don't be intimidated. It's actually pretty simple to use. What you're going to want to do is take your ground coffee and dump it right in there. Give it a few little taps, but what you don't want to do is pat it down. If you're like me and you like to check out the bottom piece, you'll see there's a little valve there. Let's go ahead and fill it up with water all the way to that valve. Don't worry, get my pants on this time. And pop this little guy right back on there. Give it a good screw and get it hot. Now what that little espresso maker is going to do is going to boil the water in the bottom and it's going to percolate up to the top and that little top chamber is going to be where your coffee is. That makes mm, about a half a cup of very strong coffee. Now, I do love a really good cup of drip coffee, but when I want something a little stronger, that's when I pull out the little espresso maker. While that's going, I'm going to pour a cup of this guy. Uh, now, normally this is the part where I'd be uh, calling you a sissy for putting so much cream and sugar in your coffee because, oh, blah, 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 I'm tough and I drink wine black. Honestly, it has nothing to do with you being a sissy. It has everything to do with me being a fucking psychopath. And while I do enjoy my pour over black espresso, that's another story. Normally I drink my espresso straight, but I um, felt like getting in touch with my uh, vaginal side. So I uh, foamed up a little bit of warm milk, put it in there with two pumps of caramel. There's nothing sissy about that at all. I do love a good cup of joe. Let's go ahead and get this done. So I went ahead and drained my winter squash and I put it back in the pot, put it on high, and let it just cook that moisture off, stir it around a little bit before we stick it in our food processor. But while that happens, I'm gonna get my bacon in this pan. Put your bacon lardons in your preheated pan and saute them to the nice and crispy. And drain the fat before you continue on. Now we got that bacon all cooked off. We're gonna add our shallot. Oh. Saute your shallots over medium high heat till they become translucent. Then add your mushies, give them a quick stir, and let them cook. While those are working, let's get our asparagus on the grill. Asparagus? Asparagi? I'm over it. Anyway, let's continue. If you got a quality piece of meat, you're not going to need to drown that thing in disgusting dehydrated spices. All you need is a little bit of salt, pepper, and olive oil. High quality protein speaks for itself. So leave the Lowry's at home. Now, that piece of salmon shouldn't take more than seven to nine minutes to cook. We got the asparagus working and that fish down on that hot grill. We're gonna add our bourbon to our bacon, shallots, and chanterelle mushrooms. Let's burn that alcohol right out of that bourbon. That is looking great already. Let's go ahead and add our pure maple syrup. While you let your maple syrup and bourbon reduce down to a nice thick sauce, let's go ahead and check on our fish and asparagus. Please don't come at me with no limp, flaccid little asparaguses. If I'm gonna shove some asparagus in my mouth, I'm gonna want it to be at least a little stiff. So if you bring that limp asparagus around me, it's going to go straight up your nose like a rubber hose. All right, so we went ahead and put our butternut squash right into our food processor here. 
Let's go ahead and add a full stick of butter. If you don't have a food processor, a blender would work just fine. Remember what I said before about tasting your food? I wasn't lying, you know. I think we're about ready to play. To me, it's not just a plate. It's a canvas. It's a canvas that I get to use to show my love for all of you. See, cooking for my friends, my family, my loved ones is definitely my favorite thing to do in the whole world. Some could even say it would be my love language. Yes, absolutely my love language. Sitting down with friends, with family members, and watching them eat the delicious food that I made for them warms my heart all the way down to the cockles. Now, don't forget to clean up that plate. Like I always say, make it pretty. Take your time. Show some love. Hmm. It's missing something. It usually is. I know I am. I'm definitely missing a few things. But hey, I'm still standing. I may not be the toughest hickory in the forest, but I'm a hickory just the same. Till next time, everybody. This is Chef Timmy saying, put it in your mouth and tell me you love me. Mm, oh. <laughs>